Greetings all you awesome viewers out there. Today I'll be doing a special video just for you. Today I'll be talking about this ID, New Angela Soul from Data and Destiny. I'll be going through how I feel you should deck build this around this ID and then bring you through what I feel is a pretty decent deck that I've come up with involving this ID. Following that, I will present snippets of a clip involving this deck in action. So let's get down to it, shall we? Um, New Angela Soul reads, when uh, Enver an agenda is scored or stolen, you may play one current from HQ or archives playing its play cost. There are two very important things you must note about the phrasing of this, which you might actually overlook. You might think this is the current ID. That's all you need to know. There are actually two very important things. Firstly, whenever an agenda is scored or stolen. This means you can trigger New Angela Soul when you score an agenda. Why would you want to do that? Your current will stay on the board. Well, you might want to switch agendas midway through the game. And this allows you to do just that without expending any clicks, which is pretty, which can come in pretty useful. Of course, this will necessitate you playing uh, two or more different currents. But I think that is an important part of, of this ID. The flexibility to have multiple currents um, available at your disposal against different types of decks. This is something you must keep in mind, because otherwise this ID is pretty meh. You'd be much better off playing one of the other NBN IDs instead. The second important clause is paying its play cost. Now, I know this seems obvious, but when you actually get down to playing a game with this ID, with any deck you build, with whatever currents you choose, you quickly realize that this is actually a huge liability. The fact that you need to keep paying for the current to keep it within the game. Now, NBN agenda suites are generally... Uh, small points and lots of agendas, so you usually run 10 agendas if not more. Um, and you expect the runner to steal 4 agendas before they win the game, which means um, you, this ID will trigger at least 3 times uh, when the runner steals an agenda. Because the 4th time they steal it, the uh, game is over. The first 3 times they trigger it, if you are paying 2 or 3 credits to keep your current in play, I think that is a huge tempo setback that many people are just not prepared for when they first build their deck without playtesting it. So with that in mind, looking at the, all the currents that are available, currently up to Data and Destiny, there are 11 of them, Corp side. Um, when you look at the 2 cost and 3 cost currents, even though most of them are pretty powerful, you really don't really want to play them. Um, because every time you want to sustain it in the game, you have to keep paying credit. So either you need to have a very strong economic backbone, or otherwise you just flounder because most of the time um, if you are down to say 3 credits and the runner steals an agenda to erase your current you really don't want to go all the way down to 1 credit just to keep the current in play and click for credits the next turn that is very bad play so let's go through the currents one by one um, there's no need to talk about defective brain chips or manhunt because they are both pretty bad with the current ID uh, Manhunt is not good because it's a base trace of 2. You only really want to play it in making news. Um, housekeeping is pretty decent, but again, it has to be a very powerful current if you want to include it because of the 2 play cost. Housekeeping is arguably, arguably pretty good, but it costs 3 influence. So that's another factor you have to keep in mind when deck building. The influence is pretty tight. Uh, if you want to include stronger ice in your deck, more money options. Housekeeping might not be a good idea. Also, another problem with this ID is that most currents in the game right now cannot really be built around. How do you build around housekeeping? The only real way to build around it is to include flatline measures in your deck, which NBN isn't good at. You don't have Scorch Turf or Neuro EMP or Snares Infection. So I think housekeeping is not a good current to build around. Uh, Media Blitz is okay, but there are not many good agendas in NBN that bounce off Media Blitz. The best being the Fragments, Eden Fragment, Hades Fragment. Again, not the best and you don't really want to play 3 pointers in NBN. So I'm writing this off as well. Surveillance Sweep and... Uh, yep, Surveillance Sweep and Lag Time lend themselves to the same archetype, Glacial NBN. Lag Time makes it very difficult for runners to break through your eyes. Imagine a Strength 4 Architect, Strength 6 toe move. That's hell. So, lag time is actually one of the best currents to play, if not for the 2 play cost. Surveillance Sweep also lends itself to Glacier. 2 or 3 Ashes would be an auto-include to ensure that um, the runner has to run twice 
twice, sorry, through your remote, and it also boosts your tr trace eyes. So TMI gets better, information overload that gets better, you name it. Surveillance suite is pretty good and it's in fraction. The problem with this is not so much the current, but the fact that glacial ambient is still not really a thing because the ice infection is still not very good and ash is the only way you can protect your agendas. Um, Caprice is just way better at doing that. So I don't really like this idea. You could try it. I've done surveillance sweep in the past and you can check out my previous videos for that. I'm not too big of a fan of it, but it's still okay. Again, you have to keep in mind that the two play cost is actually a huge deterrent. You really need to include a lot of economy in your deck to make up for it. And I need to go back to a point about this. Currents take up deck space. Deck space that usually you use for money and ice. With less money and ice, it is even harder to sustain your currents. So a word of caution out there. If you're going to try this, you can, but you'll find yourself strapped for cash a lot of the time. Moving on to the zero cost currents. Predictive algorithm was bad when it was first spoiled. Now that this ID is out, it's still pretty bad. Um, at most, it will tax the runner 8 credits throughout the entire game, at which point you'll be better off playing Spark instead, Spark Agency. Targeted marketing turns out to be the best infection current because it costs zero to play, but it's very tricky um, to master because without knowing the deck archetype that you're facing against, it's very difficult to make a good targeted marketing. And um, even, that, even if you know the opponent's deck type, it's highly situational. Still, it's pretty good. It is a pretty good alternative as a second current, you know. Um, you are building your deck around one current, but you include a couple copies of targeted marketing uh, so that you can counter stuff like Clot or make sure they don't get SMCs out early. It could be pretty powerful. So, the only three currents I haven't, left, uh, I haven't talked about are Paywall, Cerebral Static, and Enhanced Login Protocol. These are probably the next strongest currents that you want to splash for in this ID. Enhanced Login Protocol needs no introduction. It is an all-around very powerful um, current, even more so if you can get it to stick on the board for the entire game. The two-play cost is a huge drawback. Um, and again, this lends itself to kind of a glacial archetype, which is not very good. But what you can do is to s combo this with an infection click stealer in the form of Victoria Jenkins. I tried it myself and it failed very ba badly because it's almost impossible to protect J Victoria Jenkins with ambient ice. But if you want to go down the jank route, Enhanced Login Protocol is a good option. Paywall implementation, I think, is the best current by far of the entire 11. Reason for that being that, as I said, currents take up deck space which is usually used for money. But paywall implementation is a money card. It gives you money and it costs zero to play. All the conditions are fulfilled. This is the best current to play with the ID. And so I'm going to build my deck around paywall implementation as you'll see in a moment's time. And then we couple this with Cerebral Static which is I think the best alternative current. So you play two different currents um, to make the fullest use of your ID. The main current which you build around, paywall implementation, and the side current which counters specific matchups. Cerebral Static is pretty good in the current meta, of course it depends on your local meta, but it really shuts down and completely turns over the game so hard for certain IDs. In particular, I'm looking at Max, which is very reliant on the innate ID draw. If you can keep them from drawing cards the entire game, you are going to have a very good time against Max because the deck is simply not built for manual drawing. It is also fantastic against noise, which is one of the strongest archetypes right now. Everyone's complaining about false noise. Well, Cerebral Static completely solves that. And don't worry, even if there are agendas in archives, you can let them steal the agendas. Use your ID again, Cerebral Static comes back to play. It costs 2 to play, but it's well worth the cost against these um, specific matchups. It is not a dead card in other matchups. Against prepaid kit, for example, any kit actually. Um, Cerebral Static is just a more expensive version of paywall implementation in the sense that instead of gaining one credit every run, you force Kate to lose one credit every turn, which is pretty decent. They are roughly comparable. It is completely dead in certain matchups like Andy, which, well, obviously it doesn't affect, and Valencia, which starts with the bad pub already. But in those matchups, paywall pulls its weight. If you actually notice, paywall completely covers the weaknesses of Cerebral Static against Andy and Valencia. Paywall is good against Andy because Andy usually plays security testing 
So every time she security tests, you get money. Against Valencia, she always trashes your assets. Well, she still gets to trash your assets, but you gain one credit every time she does so. So I think this is the best combo you can come up with in the current meta. It's paywall plus cerebral static, and this is what I'm building my deck uh, based on. Now, paywall means that you want to go horizontal. You want to spam assets, to and this is good because basically your pet campaigns cost 4 to trash, and in addition, the runner is giving you one more credit. It's as though every single one of your remotes is protected by a pop-up window. How amazing is that? It's fantastic, I'll tell you that. So, and NBN takes so much uh, advantage of horizontal play. The best assets are all in NBN. Daily Business Show is phenomenal. No one plays it nowadays because I don't know why. It's so good. You should play it. Um, Jackson Howard is obviously a horizontal asset. Pet Campaign is the best econ card for NBN. NBN doesn't actually have a lot of good econ cards. The reason, only reason why Nerf Hub is so strong, uh, manages to get so much money, is because of Pet Campaign. Total Bags. As if I don't run enough money, now I have even more. Total Bags, Remote Spam, it goes hand in hand. And then Team Sponsorship, I'm taking a page out of S Sniper's book after playing against his um, hot kit, uh, what do you call that? Hot Pockets delivery. Team Sponsorship is amazing in any NBN, not just dedicated response team decks. You'll get to see some of this later on. And of course, all these goes with Sensen City Grid. Once again, you can trash my Sensen, but you have to pay it 5 credits in addition to giving me a free credit from Paywall. So, this is Horizontal NBN that relies on Fast Advance with Cyberdex Virus Suites if the opponent is playing Clot. This allows you to play much less ice than the typical Fast Advance deck. There are only 11 ice, and you don't need any more than that. This deck is purely reliant on Fast Advance, so you do not need to create a scoring remote, and you do not need to defend HQ because there shouldn't be agendas in HQ because of daily business show. All your efforts can go to defending R&D. And this is the strength of this deck. If you remember the good old days before Clot was introduced, fast advanced decks tend, tend to be like this. You defend R&D heavily, and the runner eventually, towards the mid-late game, the runner is in a state whereby R&D is the only server they can run, because there are no agendas in HQ, and if the corp draws into an agenda, they fast advance it to win. This is trying to replicate that. You only need to defend R&D to ensure that the corp doesn't lock, the runner doesn't lock your R&D, and you can use the best ice that the faction has to offer in Tollbooth and Newshound. Speaking of which, another important part about this ID New Angela Soul is Newshound. Newshound is to New Angela Soul <coughs> what Snowflake is to Nisei Division. It is the in faction superior, most superior piece of ice that should always be an auto include. Newshound is amazing for its two costs. You're getting a strength for sentry and the run. Where else can you find such a good sentry? I'll tell you, nowhere. And most decks are not runner decks are not prepared for such strength for sentries. Even if they are, it's still two subroutines they have to deal with. That's amazing. The current a current will almost certainly be active any time during the game, unless you really don't draw into your statics or paywall implementation. Otherwise, it's a very cheap end run that many runners cannot deal with. It's that amazing. So that's my deck in a nutshell. Let's move on to the game. I'll show you some clips of this deck in action and how team sponsorship is incredibly amazing in this deck. So I'm playing up against a Chaos Theory. I managed to fast advance the Astro script with the help of Sense and City Grid earlier on, which he denied. He trashed the Sense and Grid later on. Meanwhile, he's slowly setting up his um, rig, which he has completely done so. He has 3 all rewards out, and now he can make big bucks every turn. I do not have paywall implementation out because I haven't drawn it yet, and I have cere Cerebral Static, which is not useful against Chaos Theory until she maxes out her memory. So I'm just keeping it in hand for now. I'm waiting for him to finish his last click, which is an R&D run. Um, yeah. He doesn't break the toe so he bounces off. This means that I can score my Astro script next turn because there's no threat of clot. I can Astro train to 4 points. But wait, how can I do that, you ask? I only have 1 credit. Well, you might be able to guess. I have 2 total bags rest. Total bags will allow you to gain credits when installing the Astro script. And that is how I'm going to chain Astro scripts. Now, um, 
I'm not in the best of positions because my opponent is playing Astrolabe. This deck is very weak to Astrolabe because you are playing so horizontally. But it doesn't matter. For the Astro Train, I'm going to do it. Install Astro Script and double advance it. But first, I rest Team Sponsorship. Remember this card that I included in my deck as a 2 off? I have one on the board. I'm going to res it. This allows me to install something from Archives or HQ. I install the Sensei City Grid he trashed from Archives. So now if he wants to deny my fast advance, he has to run it again and pay 5 to trash it again. Oh, and by the way, I gain 2 credits because total backs. Yes, it's that awesome. It is insane efficiency. Of course, I, I do give him an Astrolabe draw, which is not the best of things, but I can't really help it. Um, doesn't really matter, because the credits are more important to me right now. I want to, to be able to burst up to hedge fund range, so that I can activate the Sensei City Grid. On my next turn, I draw into Eli and Daily Business Show with DBS. Since I already have a Daily Business Show, I'm keeping the Eli. Um, noticing that he has a battering ram on the board, Eli is decent against that. And seeing that he has a paintbrush, I determine, determine he's probably playing a surfer deck. We'll see about that, but in the meantime, I'm going to install 15 minutes naked onto the board with no intention of scoring it because I need the money more. By installing the 15 minutes, I gain 2 credits from total backs. Bursting me up to 4 credits, this allows me to click for the 5th credit and then play hedge fund. I'm completely fine with him him stealing the 15 minutes because firstly I have no current on the board and secondly because I can take my 15 minutes back into my deck. If he doesn't run it, as was the case this game, I'm gonna score it. So now I draw into hedge fund and pet campaign, I keep the pet because I want long term drip economy. I know this game's not gonna go on very long because I'm at match point with an astro token but it doesn't matter. Um, I'm still going to get a pack campaign because that gives me 2 credits from turtle backs, followed by scoring 15 minutes. Since I've scored an agenda, I can rescue an asset or upgrade from archives I choose daily business show. Oh, this is looking really good. So you notice he trashed a DBS the last turn. What I did was to res a new DBS and now I have another DBS. The DBS that he trashed last turn, I install it with team sponsorship. Not only do I gain 2 credits, I'm essentially telling him, you can come trash my DBSs all you like. I'm just gonna get more and more and more. You can't keep up with that, even though you have triple au revoir. So what does he do here? He has very little options available. Knowing that I'm on 5 agenda points, match point, his only option right now is to lock down R&D. Otherwise, if I top deck a 3-2, I immediately win the game. If I top deck a 4-2, I probably also win because I have a Sensei City Grid somewhere out there. Unfortunately, I do not DBS draw into the agenda I want. Instead, I find my current, the paywall implementation, finally appears and arrives. It's a little too late though. I don't really need the money now, but I'm still gonna take it anyway. I bury the pair campaign, I play the paywall. But first, I install the toll booth on R&D, because I'm kind of afraid that he can run through R&D now. Now that he has a lot of money, and paintbrush, and battering ram. So to prepare for that, I'm going to get another toll booth on R&D because it's the most annoying ice out there. Now I click for credit and play paywall. So I'm up to 8 credits now which allows me to rest toll booth. But that will leave me completely broke. Let's see what happens here. Um, yes, uh, to talk a bit more about my deck, I do run a bit of tech punishment. I think this is not optimal and could be substituted for better stuff, but I'm just experimenting right now. Keegan Lane is actually... Um, I like Keegan Lane because this deck runs News Hound and Toe Booth. They are all quite susceptible to Upman 4 with a Data Sucker. That is not good news. I do not like Upman 4. So the best Upman 4 counter in Faction is none other than Keegan Lane. Pair him with Attack, giving Ice such as Data Raven and you're good to go. If they try to run through your Keegan Lane, that's it. You're gonna blow up the Upman 4 back into the hand. You, they'll have to pay 7 credits to reinstall that. Oh, and by the way, if you get an agenda, if you score an agenda while they are busy trying to get the money back to install their Atman 4, you can team sponsorship that while scoring that agenda, you can use team sponsorship to revive Keegan Lane, placing him back on your R&D with Data Raven on it. Guess what? If they run through it again, they're going to lose their Atman 4 again. It's fantastic. Keegan Lane synergizes with team sponsorship so well. Back to the game. He played Forge Activation Orders on my Outermost Ice, so I was forced to rest the Toll Booth. Of course I need to rest the Toll Booth, as I mentioned, I need to keep him out of R&D. Otherwise I can't win the game if he locks down my R&D. 
So I'm going to make it very expensive for him to run through. His only recourse right now is to Au revoir twice, giving him lots of credits so that he can maybe make a pain brush run next turn. But that keeps him out of my R&D, so maybe I can top deck the winning agenda. Paywall implementation is not good against Au revoir. It's good against security testing, not against Au revoir because he's not making successful runs. What a pity. Oh well. In any case, he hands the turn over to me, and my DBS top decks the winning build. But I have no more credits left. I've already installed the toll booth. Yes! Turtlebacks comes to save the day. It gives me 2 credits, double advance, astro token, game. I hope this video has ignited your interest in playing New Angela Soul. I think it's the most interesting of the 3 Data and Destiny IDs, and I can't wait to find out all the possibilities that this ID offers. Thanks for watching and happy netrunning. Goodbye.